does your illustration look like this? But you wanted it to look like this? Hey there, I'm Starly, a comics artist and professional graphic designer, and today I'll be going over some of the nitty gritty of colors so your illustration will look how you intend it to. We're talking the technical side of colors. That is color profiles. Here's a side by side of this illustration saved in two different color profiles. Just selecting the wrong color profile can drastically change the look of the drawing. When I started learning more about colors, I thought they were going to be so much fun and exciting to learn about. In reality, colors are very complicated and a lifelong learning process, but we are in luck. Color profiles are complicated, but making adjustments is actually very easy. You just need to know the steps to take. Make sure you don't skip any of these steps because there is a secret to know when you save your image to make sure it's in the right color profile, but you have to follow every step. Before I can talk about color profiles, I have to explain about color spaces first because we need to be using the right color space before we can pick the best color profile. You have likely heard of color spaces before at some point. The two main ones for comic artists are RGB and CMYK. There are also other color spaces such as RYB, red, yellow, blue, like if you are painting a color wheel. RGB, red, green, blue, makes up the digital color space. The important thing to know about RGB is that it is an additive color space. This means that as the colors overlap, more light is added in until they become white. CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, also called the key color, makes up the printable color space. This is also known as a four color process and it is a subtractive color space. So as the colors overlap, light is subtracted and they eventually become black. As a graphic designer for apparel, there are other color spaces I work with as well, but you don't need to know about these. For now. CMYK is especially critical to know if you are printing a book, and if you are, I highly recommend checking out a video I made, link at the top right, and in the description. I talk about how I messed up the colors when I printed my comic, because I don't want you to make the same mistake and have books you aren't happy with. Not to mention, it will save a lot of money not having to reprint them. In this video though, we're talking digital. We're talking RGB. RGB may sound simple. Well, if it looks this way in Clip Studio Paint, it will look this way everywhere. But this is wrong. So very, unfortunately, wrong. I have had so many instances of uploading my images to a comic host, Tapas in particular, and suddenly the colors in my images look way different than how they looked in Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop. I've had a struggle with my drawings to get them to work, but fortunately there are simple solutions. You just need to know they exist, so let's resolve these issues right now. In Clip Studio Paint, go to View, and at the very bottom will be Color Profile. You'll see two options here, Preview Settings and Preview. Let's click Preview Settings. This will bring up a new screen, and if you click this drop-down menu here, what the hell are all of these options? Well, let me just say we are in luck here that we are making images for the web because there's only one that matters, and that is sRGB with all these weird letters and numbers after it. sRGB is our only choice for web because these are the safe for web colors. This is getting more technical, more above my level of knowledge, but sometimes the way a website is configured may actually change the profile of your image. That is why we want to work in sRGB colors, because we know they will be safe and the most consistent. sRGB won't guarantee your comic will look exactly the same on every device you are using, but it is our key to the most consistent results. There is still a very important step to know, one that cannot be skipped and I will be getting into it shortly, and a bit later I will also show how to do this in Photoshop. Also, I'd like to know more about you viewers watching this video. 
Leave a comment telling me about where you are in your art journey so I can make videos that can help you grow as an artist. If you learned something in this video so far, be sure to subscribe as it will really help with making these videos and you and other artists will be able to learn more and keep learning. Now I'd like to take a quick moment to talk about these other options here. Ignore these. Seriously, just pretend they don't even exist. It may be tempting to click the Adobe RGB here because it has the brightest color range with beautifully vibrant colors, but they won't show up this way on every screen, so please resist the urge and do stick with sRGB. Just click OK and move on. So now we have our colors in sRGB, so everything is all good now, right? Wrong. We have to make sure we are actually viewing this in sRGB. So go back to view and down to color profile and make sure preview is checked on. If it doesn't have the check mark there, then just click it to turn it on. Always make sure this is on. Sometimes I think I've turned it on and I haven't and then I do and I get sad because my colors have changed. So now we're ready and good to upload, right? Not yet. The problem is we have only told Clip Studio Paint we want to view this image in sRGB. We haven't actually embedded this information into the image. So let's go to File and click one of the export options here. There are single layer, multiple pages, and webtoon options. Pick whichever one is appropriate for the project you're working on. Since this is a simple illustration, I will choose single layer. Now we have an important choice to make here because we can choose either JPEG or PNG. Choosing between these two is a bit of a tougher choice. PNG will typically be better quality, but it will also be a larger file size. JPEG will be a smaller file size, but the quality may not be as good and the details may get compressed and look bad. In the end, a lot of this will depend on how you color your comic. If you have a lot of shadows and highlights, effects and details, then likely JPEG will be better. If you use more flat colors and cell shading, then PNG might be better. Also, if you use Photoshop and don't use a lot of colors, then Photoshop has a very powerful tool you can use that not many people know about. I'll talk about it later in the video, so stick around for that because it honestly is really cool. If you're unsure which to choose, save a JPEG and a PNG, open them both up and compare side by side. Look closely and zoom in. If you notice the colors are rainbowing or forming bands in the PNG version, then the JPEG version may be better. If you notice a lot of artifacting in the JPEG version, then a PNG version might be better. I use a lot of color details, so I'll save mine as a JPEG. Now here is the big secret to know about color profiles. You need to make sure embed ICC profile is checked on. If it is not checked on, then you may notice your colors change after uploading. That is because the color profile has not been embedded into the image. Simply clicking this on ensures the image will be in sRGB. And of course, we want to make sure this says sRGB here. If it doesn't, then you have to go back to the preview settings and change it there. Now I'm going to go quickly through the Photoshop part since we already have our basic understanding of color spaces and profiles, so we can zoom right through this. Open up your image, go to edit, assign profile, and if this doesn't say sRGB here, then choose it from the drop down menu and click OK. And that's it. It's done. Now I can talk about the tool I was mentioning before for those artists who don't use a lot of colors and want to save in PNG format and make our file size smaller without losing quality. Go to File and Save for Web. If you're using the Creative Cloud version, the Save for Web option will be under Export. First, go to the drop down menu here so we can choose the file type. You will notice there are two PNG options PNG 8 and PNG 24. If you have an image with a transparent background, then you will want to choose PNG 24. PNG 8 doesn't do transparencies well. 
but likely we don't have transparencies, so let's choose PNG8. Just a quick note that I also use PNG8 for exporting black and white comics since they have less information that the PNG8 format handles just fine. Unless there's a ton of gradients and details, PNG8 is almost always best for black and white comics. You'll notice the file size is now very small, but you'll also notice the colors have become pixelated and do not look right at all. This is because the PNG8 has a very limited color palette, but the huge bonus is that we can actually control the exact number of colors in this image. I can use the colors drop down menu here to choose higher values up to 256. I can choose a higher option, and now this looks really good, and again, the file size is very small. But there is also one other thing here that you don't want to overlook, the color table. This is such a cool feature because I can actually select a color here and delete it. Or I can add a color. To add a color, choose the eyedropper tool, click key I, and click the color you'd like to add from the original image. Now go to the hand tool, quick key H, and click on the preview image. Now you can click this little icon here to add it to your palette. Not only that, but say you want to adjust a color in this palette. No problem. Just double click a color and the color picker pops up. Now you can select any other color. And if you want to go back to the original color, just double click and then hit OK. And now it's back to the original color. You can also use this drop down menu here to select specific types of colors or sort them by various attributes. The popularity one is nice because it will sort by the colors used the most to the least in the image so you can delete ones that aren't used much. Be aware though that you can't surpass the number of colors chosen from the drop down menu here. So if you want to add a color, you must first delete a color. I hope you were all able to learn something new here. And if you haven't yet, I have a Discord server you can join where I post art resources, give critiques, and you can also share your art and chat with our community. We're still a small server and looking to grow. Be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions and leave a like and a subscribe if you haven't yet. May our journey for achieving consistent colors be easy and fun.